Yeah, um, I'm Mariela Cortez Lopez, and I, I am a, a PhD student. I work in biology in a biology lab. Um, I'm doing my, my PhD uh, in uh, Germany. And um, yeah, it's the first time that I'm giving a more computational <laughs> talk. So uh, yeah, I think this uh, chapter is also quite dense. So I hope we can cover most of most of the topics, uh, or we can at least discuss some of the most important um, messages here. So um, this chapter starts introducing us to the the types of signaling conditions, which are um, as I see it, kind of like a like a street light. So we have the errors, uh, which are the stronger ones, and they indicate that a function should stop. We have the warnings, which will indicate that something has gone wrong, but uh, we can still recover. And we also have the, the messages. We are informing to the users that something uh, has to be done. And um, so we will start with the errors. So the errors um, uh, are thrown by, by this function uh, stop. And this can be seen um, uh, like, like that. Like, so, so we have the, the function and then we have the error, but this, um, can be ignored with the with the call argument. Um, so, um, and, and this is just the, the example in, in the book. Um, I, I find interesting that this call argument uh, like is defined like call dot uh, um, and not dot uh, call. Uh, I don't know um, exactly uh, what is the reason. Um, but so this call argument appears in, in other uh, functions um, of this nature. So um, in, in this uh, chapter, they also introduce um, often uh, this package rlang, which um, is also to, to handle, uh, um, uh, or at least has this, this functions to, to, to handle uh, the signaling conditions. So we have that the equivalent of stop, the base stop in our language would be abort. Um, so we see that the output looks pretty much similar to, to how it looks in, in, in um, use by using um, stop. And then we have a, a guidance on what makes a, an error message a good message. Because um, in the book, um, Hadley discusses very much uh, some potential errors um, um, that, that are probably not well described uh, in, in base R. And um, in, in the book, there is also a, a link to, to some uh, sources that could, could help us to, to write better error messages. Um, is uh, there is a link to the tidyverse style um, for for errors, which um, here I just summarize in three main points. Um, so if you are going to write an error message, you can um, do uh, you should reveal the location of the error. Uh, and then if, if you have several issues that, that are causing this error, it's, it's preferred to, to have bullet points, um, at least for, for the tidy versus also what they do. Um, so it's important also to know uh, where the error comes from. And that's why it's uh, relevant to, to give hints or why is, is this error um, uh, arising? So the hints, should be um, uh, given uh, in a clear way, and also um, if if the if there is something known about what is exactly the, the source of of this error, uh, which would be uh, that that could be very far away from from the root. And in the case of the punctuation, punctuation at least for the tidyverse style, they suggest that. Um, 
uh, that the, the error should be written in a sentence um, and that um, if you can detect multiple problems, you list up to five. Um, and, um, and there's also some uh, suggestions on, on how to write these errors and they say that they should not be 80 characters wide. And um, so um, I don't know if you have experience uh, with bad uh, error messages or um, or whether you agree with some of these tidy burst guidelines. Um, I find it like sometimes they are they are uh, they are good, but but also like limited to to <laughs> to five. If if you have uh, many many more errors, I, I don't know. Um, uh, I, I would I would prefer to see all my uh, errors, but but that might be just me. Um, um, I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm just thinking on top of my head that um, um, the practical usage of these um, like error the message when I'm writing my own code, um, I'm not writing a package or I'm not writing a code for someone to read. Um, do I need really to write this error message? Well, uh, what I've seen. Uh, what? Is, yeah. Yeah. What is the practical uh, usage? What is the practical usage of this? Yeah, I feel like I feel like it's more. Um, yeah, for developers, uh, but uh, I personally ha I sometimes use the, the handling errors um, because uh, sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm running things, uh, let's say it, it functions over a list and, and there, are, there are elements that, that will, that this function will definitely not work with them, but I will need to get the output of the, the ones that work. Uh, and sometimes for that, I I do write, uh, I do use the handlers, which we will see a bit later, the strike catch and so on. Uh, but, um, but of course, in this case, it's more uh, on the output uh, or on the, on the well, you you do, you will not need to 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 write a, a message for yourself say <laughs> a very well structured message for yourself uh saying oh yeah this was exactly the error unless um um or unless it's also some very complex function i i will say um uh, that you really need to uh go to the root of what was the error but I don't know if someone else has experience uh, uh, writing messages on, on their own uh, functions that are not being released. Uh, okay, if not, um, maybe i continue. <laughs> I don't see the messages. Uh, okay. Well, the second type of, of this uh, signalings uh, is, is the warnings. And in the warnings, um, as we mentioned before, the, those are weaker than the errors. And then um, want to signal that something has gone wrong, but you can still save it. And um, there are multiple warnings that can come from a single function. And uh, they're printed only when the control returns to the top level. So um, there are ways to control these this warnings. Uh, and um, this is uh, control with the with the warn uh, option. So um, so so you can uh, make them appear immediately, or you can uh, turn the warnings into errors, or if not. Um, restore the, the, the default behavior. And again, going back to Arlang, um, in, in, warning, in Arlang, the equivalent to warnings is Arlang warn. And um, 
Uh, Hadley also discusses here uh, in the book uh, some warnings that could be better as errors in uh, uh, at least uh, on his view. Um, uh, so, uh, for instance, the, so those are functions in in base R, which um, have warnings that uh, uh, probably they you cannot really solve them uh, um, on the so so as as a definition of, of warning could be. So, um, if 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 you're gonna remove, for instance, a file and the file doesn't exist, it gives you the the uh, the warning that this file doesn't exist, but um, you will need then to create this this file to to remove it, which uh, I I guess it doesn't make more sense, uh, and which will then be uh, a reason to make it more an error. And and I mean the, there is other um, the other examples in the book is the, the lag function. I don't know if, if you're familiar with the lag function. I haven't I haven't used it. Um, but also, uh, but here the example is just that this function takes uh, uh, integers and and not uh, uh, and here you are providing a, 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 a um, the decimal. Um, well, a, a, a function, and so you. Uh, but but I I, I don't uh, I don't see how this could be um, an error. I'm not so familiar with this function. Um. So, like warnings are in this middle territory, uh, uh, which messages um, might be more clear. So um, messages are more uh, to give information. Um, and then uh, it's important also to, to have good messages that um, to uh, when you are writing a function and then um, you want to really uh, display um, uh, uh, the, the information that, that you want the, the user to know about the way that, that uh, the user should be using the, the function that you wrote. And they do not have this uh, call argument that we saw in the in the errors. The warnings do have it. Um, and basically, uh, they uh, can be sometimes similar to this cat function, um, which is then uh, explained. Uh, so, so uh, I think it's my next slide. But first, uh, I will give you the the use cases when when you want to use a message. So you want to use a, me a message, uh, perhaps when when you require uh, a not trivial amount of computation, and you want to know uh, let your user know, um, because if not, your function will kill the computer of the user. <laughs> Um, so you also will want to have a, a message when um, there uh, are side effects um, and, and, and otherwise they, they might be silent. Um, when you, for instance, want to, uh, are, are, when your function is about to start a very long running process, uh, you also might, might want to, to write a message to, um, um, maybe make your user not desperate about <laughs> why it's taking too long. Um, and sometimes also when, when your package is loading something, um, they, they suggest to, to, for instance, use a message. Uh, and as I, I said, uh, for, you can uh, compare message when, with cat, but the difference is, is very simple. So, you use cat when when the you when as a user you want to print something, which um, I think uh, that would be like the case that Sham was uh, mentioning earlier. Like for yourself, uh, maybe you rather will write a, a cat, something that includes a cat in the function when you when you want to catch something from from your function, uh, whereas. As a developer, you would rather write a message um, 
to um, tell something uh, to your uh, audience. And um, these conditions, uh, of course, they uh, can be ignored. Um, in ECD, uh, in the book, you can ignore errors using try. You can ignore warnings using suppress warnings. And you can ignore messages using suppress messages. So now in more detail, um, you can I just try to ignore these errors. Um, to uh, so try basically will let you continue even after an error took place. So in this case, we have this function, which um, uh, now we are giving it um, a uh, character, but the function requires a numeric argument. And um, normally this function will uh, would just uh, throw us the error as shown here. Uh, so it, it, tell us, uh, it tells us non-numeric agreement uh, given to this mathematical function. However, if we uh, include the, the try, then we, um, we, we wrap this, this log function on the try. And now we see the error message, but we also see the output, um, the default output of this function. So it continues, um, but also give us the information that something went wrong. Um, and, and something similar would be then uh, using suppress warnings uh, or suppress messages. And for instance, um, suppress warnings and suppress messages both will not um, terminate the execution of, of the functions. And um, they are signal in single blocks. So um, we can have uh, here suppress warnings and, and then um, running, uh, uh, in, in this case, uh, suppress warnings would not show this um, uh, warning messages uh, that, that pass in, in this function. In this case, suppress messages, um, we will have um, uh, the message uh, uh, also not shown in, uh, and, and when we run in the function. And um, I think uh, it's, short, uh, it's shorted out here, but basically with the suppress warnings, um, uh, you will you will now see the, the message because you are only suppressing the warnings. But down there, there, uh, there was, I think, a uh, um, function. Um, I, can, I can check in this part. And uh, um, basically, you will, uh, on, uh, you will do it only in, in blocks, as, as is mentioned in this here. Um, yeah, so I don't know if there is any question with the with the suppress warnings messages or try or also experiences. Um, if not, I will continue with the conditions. So um, yeah, this uh, signalings can be uh, handled, um, which is I think the most um, powerful part of the of this part of, of this um, chapter, which would be uh, on how um, can we temporarily overread or give another behavior to to this uh, fun and the, the the warnings or uh, the signaling uh, in the function. Um, Mary, I yep. have a question. Yeah. Yeah, so this is dumb question, but um, it just made up of English, and I'm trying to understand why these stops are, qu are called conditions. So, I mean, maybe the English, I don't understand the English. Um, why are called, for instance, the previous chapters, 
uh, we have seen, for example, we can see we have vectors of setting control flow functions, environment, I all understand from the name, but this one I'm trying to grasp from my head, why are they called conditions? Well, uh, I suppose because uh, you are giving like a, like a, like a status, like like a, like a information of what is happening. Like um, our condition would be like the current. I, I I suppose that the I'm not an English native English speaker, but I guess as the also the other uh, meaning is the. Uh, the current status of, of something. Okay. Okay. Which, because, yeah. yeah. Okay. Because I was like trying, why are these called conditions? I mean, I'm just trying just um, to make sense better on why call conditions. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I yeah, I guess, I, because also my first thought would be like conditions if else and, and so on. But, um, but yeah, I think it's, it's mostly because of the uh, the the, inf the type of information that they are giving you the the status of of the yeah, um, because, function. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because like in other programming language, you may see that um like if those stuff are called conditional statements, um uh, here we call them control flow, right? Um, we interchangeably call those conditional statements. So I'm like having somehow kind of conflict calling these ones also conditions. Yes. All right. I, I like the, uh, the the stoplight analogy. So you can think of your code as having your your running code as having four conditions. There's either you know nothing to see here. There's message. There's you know um, error and uh, warning. I mean er error is typically the the one that you act on. Um, I mean, I feel like there's probably something more formal than that in the history of, you know, back in the, in this, from the C days, but I'm not familiar enough with that stuff to know how that, how that came about as language. All right. Thank you. All right. Yes. So um, now we have this, uh, for instance, try catch. Um, which will uh, define uh, this exiting handles. And um, after this condition then is handled, it returns the control um, to um, the place of the function where, where try catch was called. And um, it's useful to work with these errors. Uh, and um, and I, I will show uh, this, uh, oh, the book shows this in, in, the, in several examples. And um, we also have this uh, with cutting handles to, to um, deal with, with the uh, similar to, to, to try catch. So it defines uh, this handles and after it captures the condition uh, returns the control to the to the context where the condition was signal, um, and is and the difference is that it's more useful to work with conditions where um, which are non-error, so to work with the warnings or to work with the with the messages. So, um. The, the, this conditional objects. Uh, so we have uh, that um, in, in at least in Arlang, um, there is a function to to um, to call this conditional objects, which is uh, catch C and D. Um, I, I guess it's for the condition. This abbreviation C and, C and D. So basically. Um, uh, um, when when you run this Arlang uh, catch CND, you will have um, a list of, of messages uh, that that will tell you that will give you all the details of of the the type of, of condition and also um, what was the the message that you that you got and um, this this. Conditions are a list uh, which has uh, two different elements. 
And this is, uh, as, uh, as I was mentioning, this, this message that tells you uh, what is the, the problem. And um, so, so often um, this is not used, but rather uh, null is the, the way to, to go instead of, of, of describing um, um, the, the, the call that, that has been done. And to get the information uh, of the of these um, um, conditions, we, we use conditional call on the uh, on the uh, condition. So, um, also when when you are now inside of a of a of an error or of a or of a conditional. Uh, you want to exit sometimes of these handles, uh, which is um, sort of a, a useful thing to do. Um, so you can use this this try catch again, um, because try catch uh, will allow you to to handle error conditions and also to overrate the default behavior. So. Um, for instance, here we have the function. Um, we write the try catch to, to try to uh, catch what, what was the problem. Um, uh, we have uh, that in case an, uh, of an error in, in the certain um, condition, we return the NA. Um, otherwise, uh, the, the function will run normally and give you the log of a certain value. Um, and here we see that when we provide a, a string instead of a, a number, then um, it will not go to, to, the, to the lock. It will not make the lock because it's um, creating an error. And now it will return an NA, which is uh, what we see printed in screen when we run it. So um, I, I find this uh, very helpful to then debug uh, 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 some data sets that runs or it doesn't run. So you can have this error function and then return um, a particular value. And um, it's also explained in the book that if you don't have condition signal uh, uh, or they don't match the handle name, then the code will uh, be executed normally. Um, that um, is also cut in here. Sorry about that. Um, um, yeah. Uh, uh, any any questions so far or um, comments? Uh, Okay. Um, yeah. So for for this um, exiting handlers, uh, we also see that um, they uh, return to to the or or uh, uh, this handler uh, never will return to the original code. And um, and this is an example that comes in the book. So. Um, when we try, uh, we now have this try catch and um, we have this function that goes, uh, that ha handles the condition with, with the message um, and it will give us there. But if we have another uh, uh, message, if we have something else in, in before, after the condition, it will not run because it will, it will stay in the in the first message function so it will only give us the the first part of the uh, or, or the first function which would be there and um, try catch also has a finally argument which specifies um, 
uh, a block of code. Uh, that, so this is not a function and um, we'll uh, evaluate that they, if this initial expression will succeed or will fail. And this is very useful when you want to clean, clean up uh, like eliminate the files that could be uh, intermediate files that could be generated in your in your function um, or variables, and it's the equivalent to this uh, is uh, to using exit. So, for instance, we we could have um, try catch um, and then um, several lines. Uh, that would be run and, and linked to, to the path. And when this function will finish to run, um, will uh, remove the link to the path um, in this uh, temporary, temporary file. So then it, it will clean the path that you can use after running this function. So, um, so sometimes you also want to um, uh, use this calling with handles. So you can either use try catch to exit, the, exit with the handles and then um, make the code exit uh, once the condition, once you got the condition or uh, in the equivalent, you can have this with calling handles, which um, will have uh, will mean that you set up a, a handle and then um, uh, the condition, uh, the, the execution of the code will continue normally after uh, you return this handle. So. Um, uh, uh, when when you do the exiting or when you do the calling, uh, you basically are using the handle in different ways, uh, which are not always very clear. But um, so uh, when you are exiting a handle, you um, handle the problem and then the problem goes away. But when you're calling a handle, you handle the signal and then um, and, and then you you handle uh, the, the the conditional and then if if the call and then the the call um, exits so this is um, an example of how this will work so if you have um, try catch and then uh, you um, have this uh, uh, exiting handle, um, you will only have, uh, you, you cut the message, but then um, you, 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 you uh, deal with this message, but then uh, nothing, um, uh, so, so the problem went away. Then you, you will not have to go through um, these other two warning messages. Um, however, when, when you do a, a um, calling with handles, you will uh, have the message and then um, you will run through this um, because the, 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 the conditional is still there. So, um, there, there are ways to, to muffle uh, this signal. Um, um, it's, uh, so, so for instance, you can uh, propagate this signal to, to the pattern handles or go uh, all the way up to, to the default handle um, if, if it's provided. So normally, for instance, you will have um, the scaling, scaling handles, uh, which give you the function. Uh, so, so this function that will handle your, your conditional. Uh, and then um, you will run through the um, different, uh, uh, so in, in, in the blocks in the, in the calling handle. 
So you will run inside the function uh, where you find this another calling handle uh, with calling handles. And then you, uh, it, it will print first uh, the, the more internal cal calling handle, then um, the uh, upper calling handle and, and the final message, which would be hello. Whereas it, a similar structure, it, but instead of having uh, wet calling handles, um, you have the strike catch will not return the the message. Um, it only it will only uh, print the 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 um, functions to handle with with this uh, uh, conditional. And um, and then uh, you will uh, so so it, it this hello will will not be present anymore. And this uh, can be prevented using this conditional muffle from um, uh, Arlang. So in this case, you will need to add the conditional muffle. Um, to the uh, uh, function inside inside of the of the calling handles, and then um, depend depending on of where where you add it, um, you could see that uh, omits the printing of uh, of one uh, level. So it's more or less uh, it's making more or less with with calling handles to work a bit of how it works. Uh, uh, just normally try catch in a uh, calling handle inside of the try catch. So um, in this case, you you have the conditional uh, muffle after uh, the the first message function, and then um, you see that uh, now you don't have the message, the hello message, but rather only the message for from the from the handles and you have these messages uh, in uh, because the muffle is in the external one the first one will be will be run the most internal one and then it will go to the the external one whereas uh, in with calling handles then we will we will have um uh, so, so now if we put this conditional muffle inside the the internal one, only the internal one will run, but then it will return um, to the to the um, to the uh, uh, top, and then it will not go through through uh, through this uh, second uh, handler, and uh, it will exit after only printing the first one because now it's in the first one that it uh, evaluates. And this is uh, uh, maybe uh, also a bit uh, more clear at, in the using this function um, from the package lobster, which will give you kind of like a tree of how these um, handles are, are being, um, or how these functions are being executed. Um, so here, for instance, uh, this is a exiting handle with this strike catch. And we see that um, first it, it, it checks for, for this uh, try catch and then it goes to, to check for the list. And then um, uh, it returns the, uh, the expressions and the names that it captures. Whereas the calling handles first, uh, looks at, at the global function and so and then um, goes to to check for the for the messages and and so it's um, so so basically the structure of calling handles and exiting handles um, it's uh, um, will will be um, uh, what makes the key on how these two work um, so um, any any other uh, any comments questions so far? 
Now uh, I will continue with this part, which is uh, maybe the, the most, uh, or the, one of the important messages of this package now, uh, of this uh, chapter now, when we are now um, writing our own conditions, um, what can we uh, do? Or uh, why do we need to write uh, our own conditions? And for instance, um, there is a, an example in the in the book about um, the function lock. So the function lock um, will give you this error, which says that um, if you, for instance, try to to add uh, letters uh, in the function lock, uh, that's not a number. Therefore, you will have uh, a no. Um, uh, a non-numeric number uh, that is given to this mathematical function. However, um, this is the same as if you give a, a, a series of, of numbers uh, to uh, the same, uh, so, so if you give the, the base uh, now uh, uh, letters in, uh, in to a series of numbers. But it's not, it's not telling you if now, um, for instance, the error was uh, because you give letters to the base or because you are giving it uh, a vector. So this could be like an example of some uh, message that um, the developer could try to write a bit better. And uh, or that maybe you and your own functions will need to have another message to, to know exactly where, where the problem relies. So um, in, the, in the book, there is a, an example of a custom uh, log function, which uh, this function will evaluate uh, now differently the the x, uh, so, so the first argument of the log function, and if this first argument is uh, not a number, it will um, give you the warning that this is not a number um, and that this specific uh, element is not a number. Uh, and the second thing that this function will do then would be to evaluate uh, the nature of the, the base argument on, on the function. So now, if you also provide a, a base that is not numeric, it will tell you that the problem in your function is that the base is uh, non-numeric. So um, then there, there is a, a a full description of how to um, use this this uh, signaling to um, to uh, how to how to solve this this problem with the with the function with your custom function. How can you even make this function a bit better? Um, and this is uh, an an example of the abort bad argument. Uh, um, which um, now you create a function that is called abort by argument and this function um, will use this package glue in order to um, being able to detect what is the, the argument that you're giving to this function and then um, uh, what is exactly uh, how, it, uh, how it should look. Um, and what happens if it's not? Now it would take uh, a certain message that you are that you are putting here, um, and then it will tell you uh, what. It, uh, so so you uh, create all your your um, signaling in the in the abort from Arlang, and then from here uh, you pass this to. Uh, the, uh, the this uh, function in order to return to the user a very um, very specific a very 
well the uh, written uh, description of the problem. Because now you, we are, you're substituting the argument that, that, the, that the function was using and also um, even um, making it more personalized for this particular type of problem. And this, uh, sorry, this can be um, uh, even more customized by putting um, uh, more uh, 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 more elements, such as, for instance, um, uh, when when to stop these these errors, and what do you want to um, to 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 catch, and what what exactly. Uh, um so so now it's more like uh, uh, creating a full structure of the of, of the different errors that could arise from from this particular example so um so now um uh, it's possible to create a, a structure uh, of the, of the error which will have these elements that we saw before that this uh, structures have which is the message and the details of the call. And, um, and this, the, then we have this stop function, um, which will uh, uh, handle this. Um, and, um, and now we will have this stop costume, with, which will return the, the details of, of every, uh, of all the errors that are being, um, executed in inside of this uh, function. So um, at the end, this new, uh, or this example function that we were creating to have a, a new, uh, a more cleaner call of the lock will look something like this. So, um, so we will have the, the the first check which uh, we look at whether the, um, the argument that we are giving is numeric and we check this with with this abort bad argument which we create before um, so now it would check if it's numeric and it will give you which argument should should be numeric um, and this um, as also uh, uh, different as uh, also checking uh, the second one and it will tell you whether this should be numeric or not and um, and then it will return uh, the the base uh, and if it if if this is uh, if, if there is no error you will just run the normal base log so um, so yeah, this is the the um, example of how you can um, even create more, much more uh, better messages for for signaling these errors. So now coming back to the to the question of when do you apply this? Um, so you can apply this when you uh, have a. a a value that you want to return from the error handler. So, um, so now you want to make a, a function that will give you uh, uh, the 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 value that came from from this error. So now, um, so now, for instance, you you want to have uh, the this uh, function fail with, and then you. Uh, Provide a um, um, so so when when you have a, uh, when you provide a, um, a a string, then you return um, an NA because in this case uh, the the this this value here um, would be uh, a null. Um, Another application would be uh, when you want to um, 
return one value if the code uh, evaluates successfully and another value if the code fails. So uh, I think maybe this is one of the most uh, um, uh, useful ones or the, maybe the one that more people uses when you're running something and then um, you have uh, you want to you want to return you want to get the successful ones and uh, and the failure ones. So in this case, um, the, this can be done by using, for instance, the, the try catch. You uh, uh, capture what hap uh, when this error is correct. Um, um, when, when there is no error, then you return a certain value. When there is uh, um, an error, um, you return true. And for instance, if there is no error, you will return this uh, fails. So basically you can uh, then uh, uh, trick in this uh, error um, what to return, maybe put an, a new function, and then this will also give you something um, that then you can use to to maybe understand what what went wrong to with with what you were running. And another option to to use this is when a condition uh, is signal. And then um, that that means that um, there are more uh, um, that that you can make more informative uh, this error messages and and maybe I'll also use this options warn for for blocks of code. So we uh, handle the warnings by uh, throwing an error. So. In this case, we will have this uh, new function, which would be warning uh, to error. And, uh, and we have this with calling handles. And if there is a, um, an error, um, it, will, it will stop. Uh, but we can also add um, a warning and, and a warning message. And this one will, will say, um, uh, and then because uh, one requires uh, num numer numeric options, then it will say error um, equal uh, hello. So um, the uh, other uh, alternative to when to use uh, this uh, application will be uh, when you want to record conditions for later, later investigation. And then um, you will uh, now handle these errors and then uh, check the side effects. Um, so um, you, you might need to, for instance, modify uh, directly the objects in place of, of these uh, conditions. Um, and this uh, is also um, now um, exemplified with um, now using this conditional multiples. And, and then, um, and, and yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I, I, I had um, quite trouble understanding then this more complicated um, constructions. I don't know if um, you uh, have tried. Um, um, but um, the, uh, so the last uh, option of, of this, uh, when to, when, how to use the our applications for when to use this conditionals would be when you want to signal a condition that, um, does not require a message uh, or an error. And basically uh, uh, it, it doesn't affect uh, um, the execution unless the, the user asks for this error. So more or less like showing the error only when the, when the user um, um, needs it. 
And this is also um, like uh, uh, um, taking also the, the example of, um, of the log. Now um, we create a specific error that will only be um, be used when when we um, when, when only when when the user wants to uh, to see the, the the message or this lock um, message. Oh, so okay. <laughs> I was I was just looking at, at the at the exercises. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I put it on. on put it in the middle, but uh, I just find it interesting that they say that sometimes it's dangerous to, to catching to catch errors. So um, um, maybe we can uh, I, I don't know if you if you went through through some of the exercises. Um, I, I didn't include it here in the presentation, but um, but we can discuss it if, if you want. Uh, I think also uh, we are almost at time. I don't know if there is uh, any 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 questions or comments. Yeah, thanks, Mariela. Uh, that's good presentation and indeed um, uh, on time. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you very 